Well, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Today, we're going to have, a, I think, a very exciting session this afternoon. Uh, and I just want to forewarn you on one little thing, and that is the session is going to be in Spanish. So get ready with your headsets so we can move ahead. Because today we have a, a, a group that is really incredible. These are the four countries that represent the, the Alliance, the Pacific Alliance. So let me now turn to Spanish and just say that it's an honor y un privilegio tener It is a great honor and privilege to have all of you here as the heads of the Pacific Alliance. And let me say that there's so much interest in knowing what is this alliance. There's been interest in this throughout the world. And for many reasons, because we're speaking about 210 million inhabitants, about a GDP that it represents when 30% of the region's GDP, $2 billion, $45 million in direct foreign investment, and this in the four countries of the Pacific Alliance. So there's a tremendous amount of interest in trade matters as to what this is all about. What is the purpose? Is it for integration of what type of integration? And why do I ask what type of integration? Because the major challenge of the Pacific Alliance and of Latin America is that there's, they represent 19% of the foreign trade. Europe is more than 70, Asia Pacific is more than 40%. So we haven't really taken advantage in our region of all of the opportunities. And within our region, the most dynamic is part of Central America with 25%, followed by Mercosur. But recently, they have been slowing down considerably. And the Pacific Alliance is only 4%, so they're going to have to go faster. So these are the challenges. What are we talking about? Trade, integration, are we talking about greater productivity, social inclusion? Are we talking about movement of persons, of capital, of people, of dynam dynamism? What really are we talking about when we talk about the Pacific Alliance? And I wanted to tell you that I met President Santos on the 7th of August of 2010 when he took up his office. He said to me, I am the executive sector of uh, ECLA, and I wanted to talk to you about this Pacific Alliance. You had come from the Sierra Nevada. <laughs> where there are many indigenous people, and it's a beautiful area. And now you are the head of the alliance. You have the pro tem presidency. And I think you can tell us what is going to happen on the 8th to 10th of February in Cartagena, where they're going to celebrate the 8th meeting. So in this very short period of time, there have been many, many meetings. So what are you expecting? Please. President Santos, tell us. Well, thank you, Alicia. It's a great pleasure to be here. I want to tell you an anecdote, which I think is very useful. The initial idea for the alliance was born here in Davos. It was a former secretary of Great Britain, a, f a friend of Latin America, a former uh, foreign minister, Kristen Carl Jones, who said to me, why don't you think, speaking of the four countries, and mentioned Mexico, Peru, Chile, and Colombia, why don't you make an effort to, to integrate that would be a fantastic step? And so I began to think about this. And a few months later, I mentioned it to President Alan Garcia. And he became quite enthusiastic about it and began to push for this. And this is how the Alliance of the Pacific began. And President Pina Nieto also, Mexico was enthusiastic. And we met seven times. Our next meeting will be the eighth. And I think in this very short time, we've gone further than any other Latin American integration process in its entire history. Why? Well, because there's a political will, 
because there's a shared vision, because we are seeking the same objectives. You've asked, what is the alliance, and listed a number of factors. And I would respond by saying all of the above. What the alliance is seeking is just to strengthen the our economies. And it's important here to note that this isn't a typical agreement. Rather, it's a process, a process by which, by which the countries are going to further deepen their integration and strengthen something which is going to be very important in the future, which is the production chains. That is productivity, which is one of the things that you mentioned. If there is a challenge to Latin America, it is that to have greater productivity. So this will enable us to enhance the productivity. We've made a lot of progress already on many areas. On the 10th of February, we're going to have the presidents of the alliance meet in Colombia, in Cartagena, to sign the train agreement, a very ambitious agreement, where we are going to eliminate virtually all of the uh, customs duties. So it's a very small portion that will not go down to zero, but which will, during a short period of time, also descend to zero. And that's just one part of the alliance to strengthen investment as well. We all, all want more investment. We're friends of investment. It's investment that produces employment and growth. And we said that in liberalizing trade, we wanted it to be not just goods, but also services, and we're now bringing in the financial sector as well. Free movement of the citizens of the four countries, eliminating visas. So we are moving very quickly. And I think this is a successful Example, because there is political will on the part of the four countries to continue. This is not an alliance against anyone. We're not competing with anyone. Rather, this is an alliance to strengthen these four countries. And there's a series of observer countries as well that are seeking an alliance with the alliance. And I think this is symptomatic of how we're moving ahead. And I believe that we will continue in this path because there is a major opportunity. These are the four economies that have perhaps the best economic level in Latin America and performance. And we have a shared vision, as I said, in many aspects, virtually all. And this really does facilitate matters. We can be take audacious decisions. We can take appropriate decisions. And I hope that we will continue to move ahead as we have been in recent years. Thank you very much, Mr. President. What you've said is very interesting about a shared vision, and perhaps that is a vision of development and including productivity, employment. I'd like to greet President Martinel because Panama is one of the 25 observers and Ms. Navel representing Costa Rica. There are many countries that are interested in the alliance, in being observers, and perhaps eventually joining. So turning to President Peña Nieto, it is a great honor to have you here as the president of my country. And let me say that something that has made a big impact on me from your initial year is that, I don't know if you know that you have visited Latin America nine times, which is an indication, a very interesting indication, of your desire to go further than the relationship between Mexico and the United States. We can see in your willingness to have a greater opening towards Latin America and the Asia-Pacific region, and Mexico needs this. So I was very interested in knowing, Mr. President, from your point of view, what do you see as the alliance? What does it mean for Mexico to look 
south. We're always looking north, of course, that'll never end, but we're also looking to the east, to the west. But what is that for Mexico in this? Thank you, Alicia. It's really a great opportunity for me to be in this gathering uh, with those that are representing the four countries of the uh, Alliance for the Pacific. I would start out by saying that um, for Mexico, it constitutes a great opportunity to meet once more with uh, sister countries from Latin America, not only with those of us in the alliance, but Mexico is seeking and will always be seeking to have a, a closer relationship with all of Latin America because of our historic roots, because of the identity that we have in our culture and our language, of course. But uh, also, because I'm convinced that now Latin America, all of the Latin American countries have a very different condition, very different from what uh, we used to have uh, in recent years. Today, the situation of Latin America, this region, especially the countries that are part of the Pacific Alliance, we are having greater economic growth and also more political stability, social stability as well. So then it is evident that this constitutes a horizon for economic growth and uh, therefore also social development. That's a very, very promising situation. Mexico is uh, closely related with historic ties uh, throughout the region. And during my administration, we're going to be working in a very uh, invariable manner to have closer ties with the other countries. With the countries of the Pacific Alliance, I think there's a meeting point in the, which is fundamental, and this is really the point of departure. What is common among all four countries of the Pacific Alliance? First of all, we are countries that believe and are fully convinced about democracy. We have a full democratic conviction, and we also favor and defend the rule of law. And we are also countries that believe, and we have a shared uh, vision on free trade. And we are four countries uh, that uh, we are occupied and preoccupied because of uh, social equity. These four items undoubtedly make us have a shared agenda, a common vision. And we are not uh, an alliance, a uh, political one. No, we are an alliance seeking to have social inclusion, social development as of economic growth. And obviously, this has been a mechanism. This is a mechanism, the Pacific Alliance, that should strengthen the ties of uh, a trade exchange. But it goes beyond that. I think that the Pacific Alliance, and that is why I believe there's so much interest and so much expectation over it, 25 countries that are participating <laughs> as observer countries of this alliance and three more that are requesting to be participating as observers. I think they're going to be uh, part of this in ca the Cartagena event, there will be 28 observers of the Alliance of the Pacific. And this is an alliance. Uh, this is a uh, vanguard. Uh, and uh, you have uh, said, uh, mentioned some of the data and the figures that the four countries um, constitute when they integrate their economies. That would be the sixth economy of the world, about 250 million people in this marketplace and uh, free trade of, of products, services that are going to be uh, among our countries, and also a gradual liberalization of only 8% of those products. 92% the products of our countries will be free, uh, tariff-free. And um, aside from this route, we have the free mobility of people, and the the capital market or the stock exchanges are going to be integrated right now. The other three countries have integrated that, and also the uh, fiscal reform we've just passed in Mexico. We've just enacted it. There is going to be space for Mexico to also be integrated into the Latin American um, uh, market, the MILA, in this year. 2014. So this means that the Pacific Alliance is an agreement which goes f further. It's not just a free trade agreement. It goes beyond that point, yes. And um, apart from the fact where this is going to allow us to, to strengthen the ties uh, among the four countries, we're open 
so that eventually more countries will be incorporating the Pacific Alliance. The case of Costa Rica and Panama, for instance, and they have shown great interest to be part of the Pacific Alliance. And obviously, the observer countries at a certain point, whether it's like member countries or countries that in some way or the other will be participating in some of the chapters that will trigger benefits for all the countries that are part of this uh, Pacific Alliance. So what I see in this Pacific Alliance is a very promising horizon for development of the countries that are participating in it. And the platform, this will also constitute so the member countries and those that eventually start participating in the future for us to also have a link with the Asia Pacific region, which is, of course, as we know, having a very broad and extensive and growing uh, development in their economies. So obviously, this is a great opportunity for those of us that are creating the specific alliance. That's the vision of Mexico. Mexico has a geographic location, which is quite privileged. And it is like a point of encounter, a meeting point between Latin America and North America. And I believe that um, in this vision that we have to consolidate our development and our uh, integration with the Latin American region countries and the way we're integrated with North America in the future, I hope, is not far away. I think we can accomplish a productive integration of all the America region. And this is the route we're working on. This is the path we're following, and we're going to be permanently promoting this path. Mexico is occupied as part of its in domestic and its um, foreign policy. Mexico is very much occupied in working in favor of productivity. If there's anything that has allowed uh, the growth level in Mexico now to be the optimum level. This is something we have to work for. That's why we're promoting all these reforms to have a better platform for economic growth in Mexico in the near future. And it's obvious as well that a, the topic we have to, an issue we have to look into is increasing productivity of our country. And unfortunately, for the case of Mexico, and I think for all the Latin American region, this has been um, decreasing. And we have to reverse this trend so that being more productive and also having uh, more democratic productivity, extended productivity that covers all the territory of our countries, we can be more competitive and thus be able to accomplish a pr greater productive integration. This is the horizon of the Alliance of the Pacific. This is the route, the path, and the vision of Mexico. We're working on this. Dante. Thank you very much, Mr. President. That was extremely interesting. Mr. Villanueva, in Peru, which is perhaps one of the most dynamic economies of the four, one which has managed growth that is quite significant, more than 5% last year and this year as well, very motivated, of course, or very much based on mining. But Peru is also an agricultural country. And I would be very interested in hearing about your vision of the alliance from this regional vision. You were the president of the regional um, presidents of Peru. And I, you have regions, territories. Now, if the alliance is going to be an opportunity for social inclusion and introduce equality and growth, not and grow for equality. And I know that we have Marcel and Miguel and others who have told us about how absolutely obsessed you are with bringing about equality. Well, yes, that is the truth. And may I begin by greeting our presidents and also the representative of President Ollanta, and the Minister of Finance from Chile, who are also supporters of the alliance. And as we've heard already from two of our presidents, we have many things in common. We have a common vision. And as a result, it made it a much simpler process we all felt it would be quite logical to have 
this very versatile and sensible coming together and this success is not so much measured in quantitative measures. We have 46%, as we said, amongst the four countries of the exports, but the we're not talking so much about economic level as to how people look at this integration uh, vision and how they feel about it. Otherwise, it's quite difficult to understand this integration at other levels. So, in Peru, we have an important policy of both social and territorial inclusion that enables us to give greater fluency to the projects involved. And between our countries, the various components of the integration in the Pacific Alliance were joined not just by a vision of social inclusion and lessening gaps, but also to see how we can give much more coherence to our territories. And even when we are in a position of lesser economic growth, still we feel that something else we have in common is that we believe in growth and development, which requires something else, which is a part of common sense, which is trust and confidence. If we don't have that, then it's difficult for us to grow. But if we have the type of trust and confidence amongst the four countries, then we can have this very virtuous Pacific Alliance. And as our friend, the President of Colombia, said, this has come almost from a magical place. This is our way of integrating. And with Mexico, it's virtually a, a twin brother and Chile as well. So I won't go over all of the impressions, but this structure for the Pacific Alliance has the virtue that it doesn't just include the four. We're not a closed circle. We're opening up to others because we're not just thinking that four countries can conquer the world. Rather, we are trying to internally deal with health and education and see how our young people, through an internal mobilization, can advance and with Peru, Chile, Mexico, and Colombia, we are forming a larger uh, country that belongs to all of us. And therefore, this helps us to measure our success more in social terms than just purely um, statistical terms. Well, that's very interesting. And it has also been an interesting time for Chile and Peru, Mr. Felipe Larraín, who's the finance minister of Chile. Chile is my second home. It's where I live. And I've learned a great deal from Chile, Felipe, because it's a very republican country. It's a country where the heads of state get together to talk about foreign uh, policy and where parties come together to talk about the future and how Chile is seen from the outside. Chile sometimes is a bit like an island in geographical terms, and yet it has a great affinity for those outside of Chile. So I'd like to ask two things. One is this great dynamic uh, impetus from the alliance, has it come from businessmen? And then we can talk about the other countries because the business council has been very dynamic and has really been a kind of engine for this. And secondly, how do you see, those of you who are leaving government with the new government coming in, what are you going to say about the Pacific Alliance? Why should we continue with the Pacific Alliance? Well, thank you, Alicia. And let me begin by saying that 
It is a great honor for me to represent President Pineda and to be here with the President of Mexico and Colombia and my colleague from Peru. And before I get directly into these points, Alicia, I would just like to perhaps say something about how we view the alliance from the standpoint of Chile, sharing in what has been said by those who spoke before me and my Peruvian colleague. But I want to emphasize some points. It's true that sometimes the statistics, the data seem quite cold. And as an economist, I must confess that I love statistics because behind them are living beings. So when we talk about the number of inhabitants or three trillion dollars of GDP, we're talking about an economic zone which is bigger than Brazil, which is a giant in Latin America. That is, these four countries together have more inhabitants, a greater GDP. And let me emphasize one point, which is that not only at the trade level, because it's not just trade integration, it's much more than this. It's been said here that there will be free movement of persons, elimination of visas, and let me also add that in some countries, we're going to establish common embassies. We already have one in Vietnam, in Ghana as well, I believe, no? And we're going to continue in this process. I can see that you're getting very enthusiastic about this. I also want to emphasize financial integration. We have worked on this with my uh, colleagues, the finance ministers, three colleagues and another ex-colleague who was a former finance minister and also foreign minister. And I think he's, well, a bit jealous of him. But in terms of the financial market, we've spoken about the President Pinis Neto spoke about the MILA, and this is a uh, st stock market that's going to be bigger than others. And we're talking not about the just about the size, but also about the depth, because we're going to go not just for secondary trades, but primary trades. We're going to have fixed investment vehicles and others. So it's going to be a gigantic financial market, and it's clear that these four countries together, united, are much more than each of us individually. We're more attractive as a region, and we quite believe that we will also be a better, um, more interesting opportunity for foreign investment, creating opportunities for our people, for the Chileans, for the Peruvians, for the Colombians, and for the Mexicans, moving from the south to the north. And one final point, which is to emphasize that this is an open integration. We are not seeking to close ourselves off from the rest of the world. Rather, every country continues to be able to integrate because our sovereignty in trade policy is absolute for each of us. But we will become a free trade area that will be very attractive. Now, going back to Alicia's first point, when she talked about business and businessmen, and a short while ago, I spoke opening a meeting of eight uh, Peruvian businessmen who came to Chile. And we were in a hotel in a very large uh, room, and it was absolutely full of people who came to hear us. So we have been able to have a parallel uh, motion, movement between business and the movement of the governments. They were already moving in this direction. And less than three years ago, when we started the alliance, in this time, we have moved ahead and created more opportunities so that this integration can take place. And I think this kind of cross investment is very important. We have many businessmen from our countries in investing in others of the countries. So we have not just trade integration, but also investment integration. And finally, in terms of the governments, the president-elect has said that they will follow the same line. It's not a topic for discussion. It is decided. And 
we are adopting policies of state that go beyond the mere trade policies. The agreements that we signed beginning in the 90s were signed by the governments in the joint government and we as President Pinesa are going to continue with some 60 countries that cover more than 4% of our trade so that I hope here as well there will be continuous movement forward. Thank you very much, Felipe. Now here we have I think the very positive part of the Pacific Alliance that we've heard you all speak about. But there's a few elephants in the room, I think, no? But let's see whether our public is willing to bring a few elephants and show them in the room. If not, I'll do it. So could you please introduce yourself? I'm Ilya Fellman from America Economy. I have a question for Felipe, my compatriot. When he referred to the alliance, I was struck by the fact that he said, we have more people than Brazil, and we have a GDP that's greater than that of Brazil. Is the purpose of the alliance to compete against Brazil for hegemony in the region? That's the first question. The second question is, most of the presidents referred, and you as well, Felipe, and the minister from Peru, to the fact that this was more than a trade alliance. Now, it's my understanding that the Brazilian foreign ministry is not worried about the Pacific Alliance as a trade alliance, but I don't think they like the Pacific Alliance as a political alliance that will compete for hegemony. So that's my question to Felipe and anyone else who'd like to comment. Yes, please, President Santos. Well, as I said at the outset, this is not an alliance to compete with anyone, nor to try and annoy anyone, nor to try and exclude anyone. It's an alliance which is more than a trade agreement because we're going to integrate deeply. But as President Peña Nieto said, we have a very open vision. It's not against anyone. We're not going to become a political forum. We're not interested in becoming a political forum. And another point is that we have shared missions in terms of how to manage the market, the relationship between the market and the state, foreign investments and our attitude towards them, also towards economic and social barriers. I think if we're going to talk about elephants, one great challenge that we have, and above all Colombia, where we're a bit behind, I think, on some of the indicators, we've made a lot of progress, but we still have to do a great deal more, and that is what you mentioned in terms of social inclusion, to become a genuine model of economic growth with high growth rates, but at the same time producing positive social impact. That's our m a major challenge, and we have to see how we manage our policies and even tax policies, ultimately, that will give cr clear rules to the investors through the um, pr value chains. And this will help us to create more investment when we deal with this idea of production chains. So let me emphasize the fact that we have no wish to in any way really compete with or to act in any way that would suggest exclusion. Rather, our mutual strengthening is something that is useful to everyone, to the entire region. And as we have stronger economies than Brazil or Argentina or Venezuela or any other country, we'll also see their 
economy is strengthened and Colombia welcomes this because it's good for the region. So I think we can all live together in peace. Well, I see, Mr. President, that you are very practical. And when you spoke before, you talked about how we can improve the concentric circles and spread them. But let me turn to President Peña Nieto. Yes, thank you. I only wanted to add that uh, I, I do think I was very clear, and this is something that I hope I pointed out. This is not a political alliance. This is really an alliance of uh, social economic integration. And uh, fundamentally, it is based on uh, shared uh, values. And this is something that I also mentioned we're fully convinced about democracy, we respect the rule of law, and we do believe in free trade, as I've said. That is, we're trying to break away from those barriers or break those barriers that are not uh, allowing a free trade to take place of goods and services that may be rendered to the population of the countries that are now the founders of this partnership. And also, with all clarity, this is also an open alliance. This is not a closed alliance for all those countries that uh, are in favor of these principles and these values and these convictions. I believe that aside from having the necessary elements we have already set forth, as the requirements to be part of the alliance, the free trade agreements that uh, member countries should have, all this undoubtedly. I believe this is a condition of openness so that uh, little by little, and I hope that in a very fast uh, fashion, we can have greater integration of all the Latin American region and eventually of all America for that to allow us to favor, really increase the conditions of productivity, favoring social inclusion, of course, and competitiveness in the region. Para mencionar. I would like to refer to something that was mentioned here that's very important, and that is the role of the private sector, that of business and businessmen. From the outset, we wanted the private sector to have a role as a spearhead. So in all of the meetings at the presidential level of the alliance, there's always a parallel meeting taking place of the business councils because we want to go hand in hand and we do believe that there is a synergy in this way if we work together and that has both economic and social benefits. So I wanted to emphasize that point and in this we do differ from other countries where they don't give the same importance to business development we respect their views, but in the case of the alliance, we do, do want to give the private sector a major role. Yes, I've seen this because you remember when we met in ECLA, we were in a fantastic meeting with the private sector, and I think that is how we are going to be able to give continuity to society. And I think you wanted to add something. Well, okay, since you put the question, I just wanted, what I wanted to say is that I fairly agree with what has been said by the President. There's no desire here, quite the contrary, there's a desire for inclusiveness with respect to countries, the private sector, and the comparison that's made is because the size of the market is very important when we measure the attractiveness of what we are offering to foreign investors. So that is a fact, but that's all. These four countries have a joint market that sets a regional benchmark as being the largest in the region. And it's to the benefit of all of us, as President Santos said, it's not just because we're friends that we're not going to be happy with the neighbors. We're, we feel that the better the situation in the neighbor, the better for us. 
And there's a lot of economic literature that speaks about financial trade contagion. When one country is doing well, then if there's a crisis in a country in the region, that creates a problem for all of us. So it's in everybody's benefit for all of us to do well. And I think the alliance will be good for all of Latin America. Yes, we have uh, another question here. Please go ahead. Yes, I'm Jose Arrido from Peru. And I wanted to put a question from an institutional standpoint. Jose Arrido from Lima, Peru. In trade and uh, economic integration and that of individuals, is something that all of us favor and promote, but institutional plans. There, there's big gaps between the countries. And I wonder if we could not begin to think about some kind of institutional relationship to the Dr. Larraine, who likes data. Let me mention some. Chile is number 35th in the world, Mexico, Colombia, and uh, Peru in between 35 and 102, and Chile is in uh, 37, Colombia, Peru between 90 and 106. So we have some institutional deficiencies, and I'd like to know how the alliance can help this. Pregunta. Well, that's quite a big question. President, please. No, no, let's not, let's not fight over this. Yes, uh, I was looking at Felipe because I think this is perhaps a, a, a better possibility to answer your question. I think that the Alliance of Pacific is not fighting or anything. Uh, there's no controversy whatsoever. It's not even a relay uh, or substitute for the sovereign state and whatever we, all the sovereignty we have over our own resources. In the particular case of Mexico, uh, well, understanding, of course, the backwardness we have at different levels, I think that's why 2013 was, first of all, a place with structural reforms that were important in Mexico. And this is precisely to speed up uh, economic development in our country and also to tackle social development and also to have more social inclusion. These are the challenges each one of our country faces. I think the alliance, uh, the Pacific, undoubtedly sets forth conditions to favor this greater integration, to favor the economic social development of our countries, but we should add something here. It has favored the creation of a space of dialogue among those of us that participate in the Alliance for the Pacific. I believe that the success experiences of each country, this is uh, an ideal space to be able to share those experiences, to be able to gather the mass experiences of great success, and obviously it will be the sovereign decision of each one of the nations which uh, become the benchmark or the references to be able uh, to be implemented and continue being implemented in each country. Mexico is facing its own challenges, its own situation or circumstances. Uh, this is not the space for me to be sharing everything we're doing in Mexico because I think this public domain, different spaces and fora, and uh, we've already had the space to share that with you in this WEF meeting. But I think that the Alliance of the Pacific is a space which is quite ideal because it favors growth, also institutional growth for the member countries and eventually for any other country that wants to be part of this alliance. This is a very important question because my vision of the alliance is a continuous process of improvement. And if we manage f complete free trade, on the 8th of August or the 8th of February, we've talked about movement of persons and we're going to continue this search for better practices. Chile and Mexico are already part of the OECD and we are moving in that direction through better best practices and in the alliance we want to look at the best practices of all the members of the alliance so that we can further improve and this is something that needs to be 
continuously on the agenda to look at best practices. But what Peru has done in agriculture in such a short period of time has been fantastic. And I have talked about it with my Minister of Agriculture, who's been in Peru a number of times, saying, this is good, we need to learn from it, it's a success. And Mexico also is moving ahead on many fronts, as is Chile. So this is a very interesting process that will enable all of us to seek this continuous improvement. Thank you very much for your kind words, Mr. President. But I did want to make a comment that is a response in part to the initial question, but also joining with the second question and the institutionalization. Now in our countries, in Latin America in general, there is a very weak level of good institutions. And we haven't always learned our lessons. Now, in looking at the experience of the Pacific Alliance, one of the things that is continuing to strengthen its institutional level year by year is to have set aside ideological interference. And that is a fundamental issue. Because this is not new, this type of integration. We've been doing it for years, but when one mixes theory and ideology into the mix, then things change. But the four presidents have had a clear vision and have known where we can integrate. We know that we have certain gaps regionally and in other areas. So this is one factor. Now, within our countries, and we've spoken of Mexico, we have the challenge of establishing institutional strengthening. But let me summarize two points. There is a basic pillar to the alliance, which is civil society and the private sector. So what does that mean? It means that a mechanism of this type, if we want to move further ahead, requires that we establish institutions and, and policies for promotion of the private sector as an implementation process. So. I think we're setting aside things like lack of confidence and all the rest of it because we can't have the public sector working on the one in one direction, the private sector in another. We need to work together. Now, something very interesting, we will take the question that was here, the question of workers. In ECLA, we have been in contact with workers in terms of the workers' organizations to have them look at the alliance as a tremendous opportunity to reduce unemployment and increase productivity. And we would hope that the businesses, and also in Cartagena, where we're going to talk about small and medium-sized enterprises and the very successful finance reforms that have been made in Mexico. I think these are the types of things that we need in the region. But please, go ahead with your question. I hope that in Cartagena we'll be able to move faster with some points. And something that I think could help, and here I'm referring to an experience that we've had from the initial trade organization between Mexico and Chile some 20 years ago, and that is to have a rapid flow of trade. We need more frequent um, vessels and also to reduce the tariffs. And we have on the Pacific side, we have a um, frequent passage of ships, but not so much on the other side. Now, if we look at intellectual property as well, the time that it takes to register patents and copyrights uh, in Mexico is quite 
quick, but in some of the other countries in Chile as well, it's a bit slower. So I think we could find a way to try and speed up this registration. And finally, which is easier, is to have more frequent flights. We have quite a few with Chile, but not so many with Colombia or Peru. So connectivity. And a final question, because then we're unfortunately going to have to close. Yes, thank you very much. I am the foreign minister of Costa Rica, and I'm very pleased to be here with the members of the Alliance, because it's a very innovative project and one that will be very great benefit to, to Latin America. I'm sitting here with the president of Panama, and I would remind you that our two countries are both very interested in becoming members of the Alliance. And let me say that we feel that it's an enormous benefit for Costa Rica, and we are ready and willing to contribute to any way that Costa Rica can be helpful. Thank you very much. Now, to conclude, I'd like each of you to be able to take a look and let me just say one thing. From my point of view, from as an observer in Santiago, Chile, where penguins are, we see that our region has reached a certain consensus in terms of equality, in that all of us are seeking greater inclusion. In terms of productivity, the structural changes of the reindustrialization that is required in Latin America, employment as a key productivity, incorporating people into the whole vision, and now what about Cuba? We in ECLEC feel that despite the fact that there are some who would like to see our region divided, I think the alliance gives us an opportunity to come together again, perhaps because of your peaceful words, we're a bit disoriented. But perhaps in the future we can have Latin America and Pacific Alliance. So I wanted to bring this up as a final thought. Speaking with Brazil, it's my feeling that Brazil is a very pragmatic view of the alliance. As you said, Mr. President, trade, econ economics, etc. And I think in the future, it may perhaps also be a part of all of this. So if you would be kind enough to give us your final thoughts, if you'd like to begin. Well, I share the comments you've just made. We feel that the alliance, of course, needs to be an alliance that has an open and inclusive attitude. But we also need to be careful not to associate ourselves with anyone who will hold us back, because there have been many cases where, the, by including everyone, the vessel, talking about uh, connections now, has not been able to move forward. We have to have clear rules, we have to have clear principles, and we welcome everyone who would like to come aboard, but not anyone who wants to hold us back. And part of the success of this alliance has been precisely the fact that we've been very realistic and pragmatic in terms of what is truly important. The world is changing. In great strides, there are increasingly important technological changes, and we need to see how we can integrate within this more globalized and competitive world and how we should do so. So it would not be advisable to put on the brakes, quite the contrary. We need to move ahead more quickly. Thank you very much, President. I would say that it's already been said here by... Uh, many of us uh, regarding the components and characteristics of the Alliance for the Pacific. But let me repeat something that I heard from you, and I fully favor as President of Mexico. This is this uh, point of encounter, this gathering point where we can all meet. For those of us who share the same values that I've already pointed out, this was the constant element of those of us that have been the founders of this Alliance for the Pacific. But we're not the only ones. And I think that Latin America is showing a new face. And it's not the face of 
the recurrent economic crisis. It's not the face of the political instability crisis that have taken place in many of the Latin American countries. It is still the face, however, of great social inequality, and perhaps that's the part of a constant we see throughout the Latin American region. And those instruments, uh, the Alliance of the Pacific itself, as well as those that each country has been designing as part of the public policy, structural changes, they're aimed, or they should be aimed, oriented, and this is what Mexico thinks, uh, to truly accomplish more equitable uh, social development of more social inclusion. And the Alliance for the Pacific, as I would say, is a point of gathering, of encounter for greater Latin American integration. It clock is uh, right at the door uh, for next week. I mean, uh, this will be the topic of your meeting. This Alliance of the Pacific, I'm sure, will be one of the topics of the agenda. But let me also say that it's uh, this point of encounter more than a controversy or disagreement. This is uh, to multiply more than to divide the countries of the region. And I truly wish that those of us that are now member countries and those that will eventually become members of the alliance and those that are going to be participating throughout this path, that we can do it and thus have this dream become a reality to be a more productive region in all of Latin America. Thank you. In Peru, we have a dream of this integration, but what we want to do is go step by step to gain confidence and trust, and I think this virtuous integration, and I think it is, and we can describe the alliance that way with great satisfaction, it is not, as our dear President of Mexico had said, just an area for greater integration, but also an approach to the world which can open the doors to Asia, just to give you an example. And when we feel that we are coming together and that things are working well, we're not pretentious. We're quite a very humble. We know that we need more members, more strategic alliances, but we have this confidence and trust amongst us all. Well, I think the Pacific Alliance is one that gives a great potential to Latin America. It's a contribution to the region and the way that it has been formulated because of its opening. It's both integration and open, open to the entire region. And I think that we should be able to work through the alliance to build confidence amongst ourselves and for this to grow in Latin America, I think, in the future. And here, the point raised by President Santos is very important. Those of us who share the vision, because this is a voluntary alliance amongst those who share certain principles that the founding members have put down on paper, and those who come should share these principles rather than try and hold them back and help us to expand. And this, I believe, is the c concept that can make us quite optimistic, as I am, in terms of the future of the alliance and in terms of the social component and the well-being of our people. And I believe that as we expand and go in greater depth in the alliance, should there be problems in the world economy, we are going to have a solid base amongst our four countries so as to have a cushioning effect against uh, realities that may come from the outside so that they won't have such an impact on this. Moderator, thank you very much for all your views. Thank you for those of you who have been here with us. The next meeting will be in Panama, in Latin America. Thank you all very much.